Let's dive right in. This is a quick breakdown of space filling packing, which you can see on display here in a number of different figures. To start, we'll need to be using Blender version 3.4 or newer, as we will be relying on specific geometry nodes. In a new scene in Blender, we're going to select the default cube, come to the Geometry Nodes tab, add in a node tree, and from the input, I'm going to drag out a mesh to volume node. From the volume socket here, I'll drag again and look for distribute points in volume. If you can't find this node, it is likely because you aren't in 3.4 or newer. With Alt Shift and left click, we'll connect this, zoom in, and you can see that our default option of random has a density setting where we can add more points inside that volume. And we also have a seed that we can explore. If we change from random to grid, then we have a spacing control and the lower the spacing value, the more points you'll add. Be careful not to drag this value too low or you might add too many points and crash Blender. I also find that for certain shapes, you'll better capture the original mesh if you change the resolution setting in the mesh to volume node from amount to size. From there, I tend to like to match the voxel size to the lowest value of the spacing, in this example, 0.1. From here, we can add an instance on points node and place whatever object we'd like on our grid. As a quick shortcut, if you want your instance object to fit perfectly using a number of the mesh primitive options, then for the icosphere, UV sphere, cylinder, and cone, you need the scale to be exactly half of the spacing. In this case, that's a value of 0 0.05. And so with the mesh primitive, icosphere, UV sphere, cylinder, or cone, all of these will perfectly match and fill the grid one to one. If, however, you are using the mesh primitive cube, then you need the scale value to be exactly matched to the spacing, in this case, 0.1. This isn't particularly sensible, so you would probably want to offset this just a little lower, in this case, 0.09, and now you can actually see the separation. One thing that I like to do, just to make this quick, is if I know I'm going to be working with something such as a UV sphere, then I will drag the spacing as a parameter that I can expose in the modifier tab, and I will use vector math, specifically multiplying by 0.5, and I'll plug this into the scale so that if I want to update the spacing simultaneously with the grid, I could immediately account for that and it would adjust accordingly, just so that I maintain this nice space filling model. One thing that I think is also typically worth doing is coming to the settings for the node under group and adjusting or setting a minimum value for your spacing such as 0.1. And this will simply stop you from dragging down too small here, creating infinitely many points and crashing Blender. From here, you can go ahead, drag out. On the other end of your instances, add a set material and a set shade smooth. And this would allow us to have a nice selection of space filling spheres. And we could add any material we want, such as this one. At any point, you can also exchange the original input geometry for a different object, either from your scene or a mesh primitive, such as the UV sphere. Simply select the object that you want from the outliner, such as Suzanne, and use this geometry for the mesh to volume. You can now see we have the same effect created on this object. For some objects, such as cones and spheres, and we'll use the cone as an example, you may not get exact coverage the way that you would hope, so it won't be exactly one-to-one. -one. In that case, it can be worth playing around with some of the options for voxel size, the spacing, the density, and also the exterior and interior bandwidth. You can use these options specifically, such as fill volume, to make sure you have either a hollow or a fully filled object. And if I wanted to uncheck fill volume here, then increase the interior bandwidth, you'll see that I'll fill everything in. And I can use the exterior bandwidth to sort of expand this and get maybe better coverage along with the lines of what I was hoping for. And with that, you have the basics of making space filling figures. If you'd like to see a more advanced application of this, check out the video where I recreate one of my favorite figure elements where the spheres in a grid are displaced and given specific colors based on proximity to a control object, which would be right about here. That will be coming out shortly. And until then, as always, thank you to my supporters on Patreon, Come and join us on the Blender.Science Discord, tag me with your creations, and if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.